So we talked earlier about how this ties into LEAD 21, and we'll have you talk about that in a little bit. But we also talked about the misconceptions that students have or had coming into this lesson. What would your next steps be to address those? I think just expanding on more that um, the American Indian culture in Montana is still alive and well, um, letting these kids know that that culture and that heritage is still here, just like whatever their culture and background is, is still here. Um, and expanding on where their backgrounds are and how all of our backgrounds, even though they were different a long time ago, um, they're still important to us and valuable. And then maybe separating the then and now, past and present for them, because a lot of our children still think that from the books and the movies that um, our American Indians still live in teepees and that, um, and well, and even some of the kids don't even know, the, our American Indian children don't even know that they are American Indian and um, giving them that sense that, that that's who they are and it's important and special um, and giving them the history of the background of what they were like then and, and what they're like today, I think is really important for them. This was a really rich context worth learning about for kindergarten. And it was really easy for you to embed literacy, math, and writing content into this. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, taking and integrating all of those things into a lesson and a week's worth of lessons um, is really actually pretty easy. It's something that I think teachers do every day to make the most of the time we have. Um, in LEAD 21, we're working on the idea, our main idea is working on homes and types of homes. And so with this book, The Moccasins, we were able to take literature um, with an author who is an American Indian, um, use his words, use his writing, and take it into a writing project with the children. In that, you saw um, me do some interactive writing. And um, in the interactive writing, all kinds of things come um, available for a teacher to use. Um, we've been trained in so many different um, ways to help our kids learn. Giving them the tools necessary to be um, productive writers or to even feel confident in their writing um, is really helpful. They were able to use my word wall. They knew that's a tool in the room. They were able to remember that stretching, um, stretching out a word, that chunking, which are our reading strategies that we use in guided reading as well. I mean, getting your mouth ready to write a word, getting your mouth ready to read a word, getting your mouth um, ready to stretch a word, chunking words, finding little words in big words, um, all of that they were able to apply to the interactive writing that we did um, today. Um, I regularly do sign phonics with them, and they were applying that more than I ever um, expected them to do. I do re um, interactive writing a lot, but um, the way their mind works and it pops up is, is absolutely amazing um, how that works, and they apply it um, when you least expect it, really. Um, and then in math, it was easy to bring because in, in our story, The Moccasins, the author talks about position words um, in his descriptive language. So using the language of an author um, and taking that and applying it to math. Um, we used the moccasins and we used concrete. Uh, we started with concrete um, ideas, objects, and then we went into pictorial. And then it went into the abstract where the children were actually able to apply those position words. And what was interesting was most of them were actually using their own shoes as, as their moccasins. Um, and then finally, I mean, just the whole idea of using a piece of literature written by a Native American or American Indian um, was really cool because in Montana, our heritage and culture is so rich um, with their background. And to let kids see that and get a piece of it is, I think, absolutely essential for, for our kids because they're a part of our, our culture as well as all the other um, cultures we have in this room. So working with American Indians, and I have a little girl who's Chinese, and somehow later on bringing in her Chinese background, and just all the backgrounds we have in here are important, and using all of those are great. Allowing your students to see themselves in, their, in these types of lessons is so important. Exactly. I think you definitely did that through all of these different aspects this time. Yes, they were able to apply what they know, and what's special about them, what's unique about them, um, and use it and eventually we'll get it into a writing project where they're writing about what they feel is special. 
and unique to them. So we mentioned how this ties to LEAD 21, and in the unit that you guys are working on, you're talking about different kinds of homes, and this book lends itself to that. Can you tell us a little bit about how you would tie that in? Yes, um, in the book, of course, a little boy lives in a foster home, and um, he calls his mother his foster mother, but she's the one who gives him a very special gift. And in the story, you can feel throughout the story the feelings um, that this little boy loves his foster mother. And I think working with our unit homes and what makes a home and um, who lives in a home, it, it lends itself perfectly because every home, especially in today's society, is very unique and very different. Um, so taking some of the fiction and nonfiction texts from LEAD 21, as the kids have been reading that, and then pulling this book in um, just to give them a different perspective, a different culture, um, a different, different ideas. Um, it's okay to ha live in a foster home. It's okay to have um, a single parent and be living with just your parents. It's okay to have um, grandparents with you. And again, just going with that uniqueness, how each one of us is different, but each one of us has our own home that is unique and different and special to us.